Welcome to the workshop guys. In today's video I'm going to be giving you a first look at my new purchase. Yes, it's a brand new bandsaw from LD and it cost me £150 um, online. So this is the first bandsaw I've ever owned in my life. So I've literally opened the box, took all the bits out, brought it out to the workshop and I am seeing it for the first time with you guys. So I'm going to give you a quick look at the bits that come with it um, and a quick look at this. Um, and then I'm going to put it together and see what it's like. Right, you're going to have to excuse the shaky camera work. Um, I'll try and keep it as still as I can. So, first things first, we get the all important user manual. Ferrex 10 inch bandsaw HBS 261. Um, and that basically, it doesn't really tell you a lot. You've got the usual list of contents and a few pictures and congratulations on choosing to buy a ferrix product all products bought to you by ferrix are manufactured to the highest standards of performance and safety and as part of our philosophy of customer service and in uh, satisfaction are backed by our comprehensive three-year warranty we hope you will enjoy using your purchase for many years to come well, let's hope so. Um, gives you a layout, all the bits and pieces that you've got. Uh, intended use, blah, 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 blah. All the like different parts of it and what they do. I mean, you know the score, so I won't bore you to death with that. Right, to start with, there's two blades that come with a machine. One is already fitted, um, and then you get a spare one. Um, I can't really tell you what specification these blades are, because like I say, I'm new to bandsaws. I have no idea what sort of blade it is, but it comes with two anyway. Here's a list of um, bits you get. Um, flat ended screwdriver, two spanners, three different size allen keys, some washers, screws, nut and bolt, dust um, extraction port, um, a little lever, I think that goes on the underside of the table and you could tilt it um, from 0 to 45 degrees or whatever the angles are. Um, this is the actual table. Now one thing I have noticed that it doesn't actually say, or I didn't read in any of the spe specifications, is the fact that this table excuse me a minute actually has a bit that slides out to extend the surface area of the table and it doesn't actually mention that in the uh, instructions, so that was interesting. The other thing, just to make a note of, because one thing I did do, when you get the saw, um, some of the bits are already fitted. Um, and this lever was attached to that bolt that you can see coming out of this bit. Um, but as I took that bit off, because obviously you need to remove that 
to fit the table. Um, I lost the bolt and it dropped down inside and I couldn't shake it out. So I actually had to loosen these four bolts to get the nut back out. Um, so this is why I've just chucked a bit of tape around it to try and hold on to it until I can uh, get it fitted in place. So you get the usual push stick, which I have to say actually is quite thick, um, quite sturdy and it's quite long as well. So, I mean, it's okay as far as free push sticks go. Then you've got the miter fence, which is actually pretty good. It's even got a plastic film on it to protect it. Um, and that's made out of like an aluminium runner. Um, back bits are plastic, but it feels quite quite sturdy. I don't know how well it fits in the slot, but the fence looks quite impressive. Um, it's got the bit of either end that locks it at the back, and it's also got, by the looks of it, some sort of mechanism you lift up and then push it down to lock it in place so be interesting to see how well that actually locks in place and then obviously a little plastic dial and I think that's the release for the extension part over to the saw and like I say the band uh, blade rather not band is actually fitted and it don't it seems quite well tensioned um, I will have to check that. Like I say, I'm not overly unsure on these bandsaws, how they need to be set up, so I might have to do a bit of reading. But the um, the doors open. Obviously, you've got like a close and open. So you just turn it, quarter of a turn. And you've got two on the top door. Excuse my shaky hands. That so you just turn. And then that door actually opens. I mean, you've got all metal mechanisms on the door. Um, it's all metal, metal. Like I say, the blade was already fitted. I mean, from what I can see, it doesn't look too bad out the box. Um, so on the front, you've got like a warning sticker and then you're on off. Bottom door is just simply one of those things, and you just caught a turn, and then you can open that one up. Um, this is inside, look like a little brush thing, which I assume when the wheels are turning, it kind of just brushes all the dust off, which is quite handy, I suppose. And this is actually meant to be two speeds. Um, you can see if my camera will focus, come on. Let's uh, see if it focus from this side. Yeah, you can see where the uh, belt is. There's actually another position that it can move on to. So you've got two positions, one at the back, one at the front. Um, belt's just like a normal, fairly like rubbery i assume it's like rubbery or um the thing that actually impressed me about this was the fact that if you look where the um blade runs you've actually got proper bearings um which i was quite impressed by obviously this is your lever. Oh break the thing you leave a for your like height adjustment um, just twist that little knob at the bottom you've also got like the the bearings um, I'm assuming these little allen bolts or whatever they are at the front are to adjust the um, bearings because you've got one either side, one there, obviously, one there, and I don't know if you'll see it, but there's also one 
down the bottom there as well which quite impressive really for a cheap bandsaw I know the Titan one which is about £109 from Screwfix at the moment I know that's actually got like the metal rods so anyway that's that side on the side there you've got the usual dust port and if I spin it around excuse me a minute obviously another knob there not sure what that is there's the uh, specifications if my phone will focus come on okay it's gonna be a, a nuisance is all right so the first things first make sure that bolt that comes out of this part goes through the hole in this angle bracket and then you'll know when it's sat in straight and then on the bottom of that goes the washer and that bit right that's on there now this was a little bit fiddly now I'm not sure whether there was an easier way but the problem you had when the bolt was dropping through this bit there's nothing to stop it being pushed back up inside this housing um, so I ended up having to put a screwdriver through there to hold the bolt in place then you've got to try and thread this part on but in order to once you get it this bit threaded on if you press the button down or pull the handle down see it moving up and down when you put it down you can pivot that then let it go and then you can tur keep turning it round so it's a bit like a ratchet um, so in other words to loosen it press pull the handle down or press the button whatever you want to whichever way you want to look at it um, slide that round let it go and then you can turn it anti-clockwise which will in turn loosen the table off I say I do apologize for the shaky camera I'm trying to get you the best angle and then obviously to tighten it up you just got to do the reverse so you'd press that in to release the handle or whatever push it all the way around release it to twist it back round again and then let it go back into its normal position and then move it round if you know what I mean right now I think the fence you've got I don't know if you can see it on there the shape of the uh, aluminium and the um, that these bits basically just lock over them bits both sides you line it up he says he says that's one side oh yeah that's one thing I didn't do. You've got some little tiny, I don't know what they're called, but in order to slide it on, you've got one of these either side. Um, so you need to take them off both sides. I think that's so you can't just take it straight off. So you, you have to make sure they're out. Right, the fence just simply looks like you've got a way of adjusting it at the other end as well because when you turn that bit, I don't know if you'll be able to see from here, I'll try. When you turn that, it moves one way and then when you turn it, you can't really see it but that just sits on, on there and then just slides backwards and forwards. To lock it, push this end right the way down and that is locked in place then you've got four screws and four washers I think really a great deal to actually put together I 
Right, that's on. That's that. And the last nut and bolt basically goes through that hole on the table. And then you've got a washer and a nut that goes on the underside. Yeah, so now that's tight, this is automatically lined up, so that's better. So you know, you can't adjust these because these are fixed at the back. But once you tighten that nut up, it actually slides. So that's good. And, all and last things, there's the mitre gauge. Now, I mean, you've got the usual bit of movement. We all know what the, these mitre gauges are like. It's a little bit of side-to-side -side movement, but I mean, this bit's plastic. That's aluminium, but I have to say it's quite. It feels quite well built. Um, slides easy enough along the table. Twist to tighten it down. Um, Yeah, all in all, not bad. Now, uh, I think to adjust the bearings, you literally just undo these nuts, and there's one on the other side, and you can basically slide. See that? I don't know whether you can pick that up or not. You can see it slides. Um, now I haven't read the instructions yet on how to set these up, but what I... I think if you don't want them so they're spinning the whole time because um, if they do that they're obviously too close but you want them just off the blade but I will obviously check that I mean they're just a 10 mil nut I still haven't actually actually used any a 30 mil but I'm assuming the lower ones are the same as that so Right, so I've had a quick look at the uh, the guide bearings. Um, they might need a slight bit of adjusting, but I'm just going to try a cut with it as it is, just to kind of finish off this. Well, I'm not really calling it a review because I've only just got it, but you know what I mean. So I won't use the fence to start with. <laughs> Didn't expect it to cut that well, it was like a hot knife through butter. Right, so I'm not holding up too much for this, but we're going to try a really thin rip. Remember, I haven't set it up properly, and it's a stock blade, and I just want to see how well it does. So... people were saying about the Titan doing terrible but I mean that's for the stock blade and I haven't even like fine-tuned it and that's that's not bad that's wow let's see if I can set this camera up so you can actually see rather than uh, my hand all right, let's just move it over a fraction. Excuse the. I'm trying to do a like detailed review, 
Alright, I'll do it there so you can see. from the fence at one point but I mean look at that that is well impressive I am shocked by that I didn't actually think it would do that good a cut I mean that's amazing with a stock blade as well and that's just well wow. well the only other thing I wanted to try a little bit of plywood, 18 mil. can say is that has actually just surprised me because I know people were saying with the Titan ripping like thin strips it was all over the place and all that now bearing in mind I haven't adjusted the top and bottom bearings like properly um, I kind of just undone the top nuts just to see if that's how you adjust them which it was um, so considering all of that, that is well impressive. It's a shame you can't really tell how straight this bit of timber is, but if you're in the market for a cheap benchtop bandsaw, I would recommend this one on my first like, thoughts on this and how it cuts even with a stock blade. Well impressed. Right guys, that's going to wrap this video up. Um, thoughts on it so far? Well, it cuts like a hot knife through butter. Well, I mean, I know this was only softwood, but I wasn't even expecting it to be that precise. More or less straight out of the box. I mean, that's just amazing. Um, so yeah, 150 quid, but on first opinion, or first thoughts, I would definitely recommend it, so bearing in mind this is my first ever bandsaw, so I've got nothing to compare it to, but as cheap tools go, yeah, definitely worth a punt, I reckon. So... That's going to wrap this one up. Um, I have got another item which turned up today, which I will be showing you in the near future. Um, so yeah, next job I think I'm probably going to be doing is building a stand for this. So cheers for watching, guys. Welcome to all the new subscribers, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.